So obviously you were deeply involved in the other films with all the stuff that you did with the creatures that you worked on there. This yes. with, is it K or Key? Tall sides. How do you it's say it? Hey. K. Okay. It's Quay. It's Quay. Quay. Got it. Right. I'll I'll say it right from now. So Quay. So Quay feels like a feature character, a step up, I guess, if you want to put it in those terms. Was that something you were expecting? Was it something you chased after? Did it come to you? How did that work out? Um. Oh wow. Well. Um. Well, first of all, I wasn't sure if it was Quay. Sorry, if it was Key or if it was Quay. <laughs> that's how I said. Oh. I've been saying Key. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what the word says, right? <laughs> so, so, and, and, and that's the, that was the working title I was going under while he was in development. And then once I hit the set, he was being called Quay. Um, I'm guessing it was frenetic. Um, but then, uh, the other day on Twitter, I was, I put, uh, I put a question out there, um, to Pablo and to the, um, uh, yeah. Lucas writing group. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and they came back to me and said, yeah, it is key, but it, we've, we, we, we are pronouncing it phonetically. It is Quay. So I was like, okay, I can deal cool. with that. Cool. Um, so yes, yeah, so Quay it is, but, um, I had been, uh, yeah, for most of yeah, I've been pretty much dressing up as two other creatures, um, for the movie and, uh, one of which is paired back up with Tom Bell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, Right, I've got my dictionary out. I keep forgetting this guy's name. And um, we get to play two more laughing creatures in and around the Sabak table. And we're not sat directly at the table. We are kind of part of the crowd watching. And you'll see these two ugly rat face, mole face type guys just laughing with drinks in their hands with these space flight suits. And that would be me and Tom. Um, is that, that Fugus Vandita? Yeah. Yeah. So we're not sure who that is. <laughs> if that's me or if that's Tom. I wouldn't want him nipping at my fingers. That's a rock, mighty pair of teeth, isn't it? <laughs> oh, he's, oh, he's a pretty boy. He's a pretty boy. He is. He is. We shouldn't judge, should we? We shouldn't judge. <laughs> yeah, it'd make a killing using some floss though, eh? <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so, so me and Tom, we're not sure who that one is. So, yeah. so because they, I think through the translation and because of the production switch, they weren't, they didn't realize that we're supposed to be paired up together. Yeah. Pay a bit of a nod to being paired up for, for the Force Awakens. I was going to say, you and Tom have got to be together, haven't you? Yeah. So, so when it's laughing creatures, um, yeah, <laughs> put your money on it's on me and Tom, you know, um, but yes, we, that, that guy, Fuggers Fandita, what does it say he is? He is a gotterite. A gotterite, so like a mole type dude makes it makes it perfect for mining, I'm guessing. But um, yeah, me and Tom had been dressing up and uh, just you know crushing our little duet scenes or whatever in 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 the in the Sabak um, room. So we started off at the bar, um, then we then we were sat down at a table, then we were um, where we are in the movie. A kind of behind L3, yeah. uh, just watching what's going on with this droid fight. And then when Kira is bringing Han Solo through, um, and talking about the game and they're, and they're, and they're kind of looking at Lando and how he's playing the game, they walk past us. So you see the back of us. Yeah. And they don't see us again until I think it's either Han wins a game or, or Lando wins a game. And then you get a quick shot of us laughing with the drinks in our hands. So we've been spending a lot of time doing, doing that. And, um, uh, then, um, the other character was, uh, he doesn't even have a name or a description, but there is an image of Han stood facing the camera. And I think it's, it's definitely in Savarine and he's got some of the locals stood behind him yeah. and he's got a pretty lizard face dude kind of just off to the left. And that would be me. Okay. Uh, and uh, he, I think the original plan, because I think this is the same with Stephanie's character who, um, in the Denny's commercial, when Lando wins the game, I think he kisses her hand. Yeah. And, um, and then she backs up. Um, but that character is the same character you see in the desert. So there are a couple of quick shots you see of her. You'll see, um, Stephanie, you'll see Barbara, and then you'll see me. 
but at the head of that, you'll see Warwick with a bazooka. Yep. Yeah, and that's us shooting blasters at the enforcers. At the enforcers, so there's a split second I get to shoot a blaster, and I'm just like, wow. <laughs> you know? How did that feel? That's a big deal. How did that feel? Yeah, um, just you know, what, uh, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got Warwick. Warwick leading the gang. He's shooting a bazooka. You know, and then I get to. I think it's more of a dream to hold a blaster and to shoot a blaster than it is to hold or wield a lightsaber. Agreed. Um, I think for a child, from for the child that I was, to be able to see a laser blast travel from one side of the screen to the other, yeah. I, it blew me away. It baffled me. You know, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And then I'm up on this this um, this platform with with the guys and. You know, um, I'm not even sure if Barbara could see out of that head. <laughs> she was wearing four eyes. <laughs> you know, and with all those eyes, she, I don't think she could see. Yeah. And, um, but there was, <laughs> I just remembered, there was this thing. I, t- I taught, um, Stephanie, um, how the words to supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Go yeah. Down. Yeah. Yeah. She learned it. She learned it in about two minutes. Right. But then I gave her a little dance and a little jig that she has to do with, <laughs> with it. And so when she saw Barbara, she's like, yeah, I know, I know super califragilistic. And so she performed it. And then when we got up onto that, onto that ridge, onto that balcony, onto that platform thing, we started singing it. And so, you know, <laughs> me, me, me and Stephanie went down and Barbara went up as we were singing it, doing that little, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was hilarious, but it was so <laughs> surreal at the same time because you know, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, Disney are filming this back home, and um, and then and then it was and and then it was holding the blaster and shooting shooting the blaster and and thinking that there may be a chance of that making the cut or whatever, but I'm shooting a blaster. Um, that whole sequence at that moment was was beyond um incredible because that's the thing i was going to say um with stephanie's character appearing in the sabbat game and then in the desert my character was supposed to have um an appearance in um corellia in the yeah. corellia spaceport yeah. and i think what the what the option was going to be was that you were going to see all these familiar faces and then you're going to realize that actually and Nef- Enfis's gang have been watching all along. Okay. Yeah? yeah. Um, and then I think they just rounded it down to being just Warwick. And if you're going to round it down to anybody, at least it's Warwick, man. So I'm, I'm cool That's with that. Okay. But, <laughs> and, and yet, and yet we still got to be a part of, of Enfis's gang. And, um, uh, so yeah, so, so that whole, so that whole journey from, from, being the gotcha right to this this lizard face guy and um and then you know being introduced to this other costumed character um that they that they just reached out and said d we've got someone else for you to play and um you've got to come in for fittings so going in for fittings and not understanding where it's going to play i yeah. didn't know point it was a pike um I wasn't sure. I thought he was just going to be in the computer room and they've just got strange looking droids in the computer room, um, which they did, but brilliant droids. But I thought he was just another one of those. And then uh, later on, it turns out that they said, oh, no, no, he's he's actually running that that uh, that center, that hub. I was like, mm-hmm. OK. And they said, oh, yeah. And have you have you had any um, chatting conversations with Andrew Jack yet? I said, no. And he said, Right, we're going to arrange a meeting for you to see Andrew Jack, and um, all you've got to know is that I think they want the language to be kind of really ugly and really dirty. And yeah. Okay, okay, cool. And, um, yeah, Justin, one of the sculptors, that, that well, the, the head sculptor of that thing, he didn't know what, what, it, what it was he was building as well. So he was saying it was quite peculiar, you know, but we've got to put this head on you, and then... I don't, I hope you don't mind, but we're going to have to screw the back in. So you're going to be, you're going to have your head locked in this box for a while. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, Star Wars, I can do that. Yeah. And, um, and then, uh, Jake Lunn, I think they designed the character. And I think he's the one that, that cottoned on to me and just said, oh no, he's, he's a pike, but he's been, 
you know, this stuff keeps him alive, this, this thing that he's wearing. Yeah. And then it kind of started to slowly make sense. And, um, and then I turned up one day to Lucasfilm and then they said, Oh, Andrew's waiting for you down at the base unit. So I went down there and yeah, <laughs> he basically said, well, look, we're going to play around with some sounds and it just has to sound ugly. And then he started making these kind of retching sounds and, and, um, and, and, I started putting some layers on top of that and then we wanted to push it even further. So I, I was pushing these kind of burping sounds through. Yeah. And, um, and then he said, Oh, no, that's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> right. It sounded disgusting, but that was perfect. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, we got on, when I finally got onto set before I was even in the costume, I was introduced to the cast and yeah, it was, that was quite surreal. And, and just, got and put my head down and they said well look, this is how we're rehearsing it and you're going to walk out of this doorway and um i want you to be describing and just showing them off showing off your place or whatever and, yeah. and so on and so forth so they said action and then i just went straight for it i started making all the sounds or whatever and then phoebe just came in and said oh mr tall is saying blah 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 and i was like oh cool and then it was, yeah then it was costume time and um in in a way, it was kind of cool to have that head on because yeah. I'm I'm standing there waiting to go. I'm you know I'm <laughs> you know I'm itching to go. Yeah. But then I'm standing there having these surreal conversations with with Woody or or Amelia and Phoebe. Um, and one where I think Amelia remembered my band M and Eight, and then as soon as she mentioned that, Phoebe remembered it, and then it just it was even more surreal because I'm talking to um, the the latest droid in in a Star Wars movie, and I'm talking to the mother of dragons, and they already know about my music, and they're standing there singing my music, and and I'm hiding my face in this box just with my mouth, my jaw dropped because it was, it was so surreal. Um, and and that that was the other thing. All of them, and especially Amelia, you know, she could entertain. She'd entertain you when she's just chatting to you and yeah. she's laughing away or whatever. And then as soon as she said they say action or rehearsal or whatever, she's there. <laughs> it was just like it was like I can work with this. This is cool. <laughs> this is cool. And one of the coolest things about that whole sequence is that you get your ass kicked with Terrace Kazi. <laughs> By the mother of dragons. I mean, how was that? That was that was pretty cool <laughs> to be able to say that that happened to you. I'm I'm I'm, I'm saying this now. I'm telling everybody. I'm putting it on my CV. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's just amazing. It, just everything about it. Um, I could I kind of gauge the pace of the sequence. I knew this was part of the heist. I knew this was part of that. You know, Ocean's Eleven thing where you. Totally. you be, it's being broken down. I'm going to go in there and do this, and we're going to go in there and do that. And, it, and then you see the visual of it. And I just thought it could be something as quick as that. Yeah. We had more of it, so I was I was appreciative of that. But I got my mindset for that room was that's the pace we're going at. And um, yeah, when um, uh, the stunt guys came in, because because I can't, um, I would love to take credit for that. Visually, that's me getting <laughs> fucked. But no, no, no. It, 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 um, it was it was Darren Knopp, um, one of the Knopp brothers. You got David and Darren, and I think David stood in for Darren a couple of times or whatever for rehearsals. And um, yeah, it was Darren in in my Quay costume, and then it was um, Fizz dressed up as Amelia. You know, little Fizz. So it was kind of it was it was amazing to watch because. You see me turn towards the door as soon as I hear Beckett kick off. And then that's the last you see of me. And then you see Darren come up to the window and, and he's peeking out. And then you see Amelia walking up behind him. And then as she crosses behind him, it switches to Fizz, who then throws his head into the man's <laughs> window <laughs> and sits him toppling. It was so brilliant because... It was, he's so big and intimidating. The, the costume is, is so heavy. Oh, yeah. He's, he is a nasty piece of work. You see him put his little pipe thing underneath, um, uh, Amelia's chin, Kira's chin. Yeah. You know, he thinks he's got this, you know, um, and, um, 
any negotiations that's going to take place, he will handle, he will manipulate. These people are on his turf. If they mess up, if they, if he doesn't like them, he'll just kill them or enslave them. Yeah. He's, he's, his mindset is win-win. And when, um, Kira, the, with the size difference, you know, hands him his, his ass in that room. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's oh, yeah. brilliant. I watched it with a grin on my face because it would look so cool, yeah. you know, and um, that's the stunt guys hardly breaking a sweat. You know, that was kind of like, oh, oh, you, oh yeah, we'll, yeah, we got five minutes, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> because they're so brilliant. You, you another thing that you forget is that these movies are swamped. These movies are draped by the stunt men and women, yeah. you know, who sell these action sequence who create these action sequences and I, you know, um, to be involved in it at that level with these guys is, is a beautiful thing is a beautiful thing. And especially if they're going to deliver um, work like that, you know, it was short, it was sweet and it delivered um, the necessary <laughs> punch that um, Quay needed. Totally. And then, then she's, then she kneels over him and then pulls out the keys because she shoved them in his chest. And it's, just, you know, it was brilliant. And then I get to see Woody, you know, I get to see Woody in, in, in Lando's outfit, man. Well, well I, that you know. was a nice little Easter egg, wasn't it? <gasps> Dude, oh man. See what I mean? Yeah. That, and that was, an, and that's just another thing that was going on in that room, you know? Um, so I re- obviously I recognize the costume. I think quite a few people recognize the costume. Um, and I kind of worked out its story, <laughs> you know, or the costume's journey to a yeah. point. Um, I, I'm, I, I managed to try on the head, that the helmet. Um, I had to. Really? And, um, yep. And I got first row seats at watching Woody twirling those guns and blasting the hell out of that room. Um, Woody d- does that. You know, he could twirl, he was taught how to twirl those guns. When you see that silhouette of him and he's blasting, is it Mimban? Is that the card? Yeah, yeah, Mimban, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. so when he's, so when he's blasting away, that's him. And you're just thinking, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. That, this is what, this is why I loved, um, what was it? What's that movie? Did he do, um, Zoo? Was it Zoo? No, it was, what was that movie he did? Um. Oh, um, Zombieland. That's it. Yeah. I was going to say Zoolander or something. I know Zom- you were going to say that. <laughs> you know, and I know he wasn't in Zoolander. No. So, um, so yeah, Zombieland. <laughs> and you're thinking, this is, this is Woody in flight. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> yeah, he is everything you expect. He's just so cool. <laughs> so when we spoke, when you did uh, The Force Awakens, you yes. were excited. Yeah. Now <laughs> I'm listening to you and you're a lot a bottle of pop. So, so clearly, this is just this has been just the best experience, and you've had the most fun. And and I, I would imagine Quay must must top your list now of your favourite characters, of which there are quite a few now, isn't there? Um, yeah, there's there's Kratinus, there's L one, there's Slow and Low, then there's um uh, one of these Gotter right guys, and then yeah. there's this guy, and and now Quay. Um, I you know. I'm sure I said it at the time, um, but even now, even even now, if if and when I'm turning up to work, it's every day is the best day of my life that I'm having. Yeah, you know, and um, it's it's only ever topped by the ne- the, the following day that comes. Um, and the, even if it's it's like there's there are a couple of things, especially around the back table. Like it was, um, Derek Arnold and the Matt Denton and Andrew Coombs operating or performing, um, Six Eyes. Yeah. You know, and it's Derek inside that, inside that head that weighed a ton. He couldn't lean forward. If he leaned forward, he would go. If he leaned too far one side, he would go. There was no wow. question about it. And he just owned that seat and that posture. And the communication he had with Matt Denton and, and Andrew Coombs under there, um, to the point where I'm watching this thing take place. And then I'm hearing them say, I'm hearing them being directed and saying, Oh, can you, can you sneak a peek at, at Hans cards? And then when he catches you, just turn away or whatever. And, and, and 
they did it. And I, I, I this, this could be, this could be just my imagination, just, um, rounding it down, but yeah. it seemed like it was three takes because they were so in sync. And to do that on the fly, that for me, when I see that clip in the movie, that's the best moment in the movie for me. Wow. Because you know I what went into that, it. Yeah. I saw that live and I know how hard it is to sync all of those things. From, from, from Derek having to do the body gesture or whatever. Yeah. To Matt, um, and, and Andrew, um, controlling the eyes and the facial expressions and to make that work. I know how difficult that is. I mean, and these guys, you know, you're in good hands. They did, um, Ollie Taylor and, and, and Steve Kim and did that with me for slow and low. But when you're seeing such a complicated head, do that with the, with the eyes. They look down and then, oh, they got caught. No, no, let's look up. No, no. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. I couldn't contain. I couldn't contain myself just watching that. I knew right there and then if that's in the movie, that's the best thing that I'm going to see throughout this whole thing because of just the just the logistics of how that works. That could either take two minutes or it could take a whole day. Yeah. I'm going to watch that scene next time with different eyes, just two, not six, but, but totally, you know, that's that's going to be something I'm going to focus on now because, like you right. said, the choreography. Yeah, but then also, but and yeah, but that was that was that was almost improv because they were just it was just thrown at them. Say, oh, could you could, could you just do this? <laughs> you know, so it was rehearsed and delivered in that take. So yeah. now, so now you're four films in now. So, and with the fifth coming up fairly soon to start shooting. So that crew, the creature crew, you guys, they're all working concert together. You must now see, um, methods getting tighter and, and skills being honed. You must notice the difference from Mazzy's Castle back on Force Awakens to, to, you know, what you've just done in solo to what's coming up. You know, you must see the progression of just the techniques and, and all the other elements. Yeah, and it's also um, what you also take on board because we're also getting um, uh, new people in for suits and, and, and so on and so forth um, as we go along for, because of their specific size or their specific specific height or their specific talents and things like that. So um, sometimes when when they're curious about certain things, you can you can step in and help. Um, and that's all we do is, is kind of, it's very, a big family affair with CFX. We, we laugh around and we have the best time, but it's because we all look after each other while we're, while we're shooting these things. Um, like for example, um, another guy around the table, you've got that guy with a disc dome on his head yeah, yeah. and his mask on and he shuffles the deck. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, that is Stephen Bridges. Yeah, he is a street magician. He was brought in as a consultant in case they wanted to do any sleight of hand things or whatever at the table. Like if they want to roll the thing over their fingers, he would teach Donald or Alden how to do that. Yeah. Um, and then um, it would turn out and say, well, what other tricks can you do now? This guy when he first put on that costume and put on that head, put on that head that he cannot see out of, he had a panic attack. Yeah. Wow. Couldn't, do it. Couldn't do it. And then um, after about five minutes, when he kind of realized that everybody is kind of semi in the same boat and don't worry, you're being looked after, you're being watched and monitored and all that type of stuff. He was like, okay, um, let me try again. So he puts the suit on. He's cool. Then he puts the gloves on. Then it's like, how do you do all those tricks with thick leather gloves? So he just practices for about five minutes and then he's got the thing going with the cards shuffling into his hands. Um, he's doing all these um, uh, coin tricks with, with the gloves on. He's doing everything blind. Wow. With gloves on. Yes. So when you see that clip in the trailer yeah. and it is repeated throughout every single trailer, they had it. That wasn't some magician going, oh, I can see what I'm doing. This is easy. Boom. No, 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 no. <laughs> this guy went from being kind of claustrophobic in the costume to then being um, able to become one with his costume to be able to gauge what he was doing, you know, um, and that is while you've got principles on set, 
while you've got extras on set, while you've got creatures and their operators and performers on set at such a high um at such a high level intensity level and he was able to hold it together and do it you know i'm i have so much love and respect for seeing that transformation take place and for it to be delivered and end up on the screen you know um and that's the thing when we were out in the desert um uh one of the stunt girls choose choose lucas who i love dearly um um I, I had a panic attack because she was, oh, she was the multicolored face Greedo kind of. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, what they're called. They're not called Greedos. They're called. The Rodians. Yeah. Rodians. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they're called Rodians, yeah. And so there's a really cool clip that I saw her do and I was, I was scared of her because she's only a little thing. Yeah. But when she ran up to that enforcer and put her foot in his chest yes, to put yes. it down, I was like, I'm scared of you. <laughs> but, but but she had a brief a panic attack because when you're stood there wearing these heads and they've got those specific lenses on yeah, yeah you can see out and fine as soon as they yell action and you start breathing and yeah. you and you start steaming those things up you go blind in a second and um it was um the fabrication department um i'm sure it was vanessa's vanessa's team and and those guys they managed to put some tiny holes in in the eyes um, so she could see, but it also it would help with it with the air, um, so they wouldn't steam up as much. Yeah. And um and then me and Chus were, were paired up quite a bit, and so um I was able to to give her a, um, a lot of support and say, look, your head is no different than mine, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And it, once you're on that, once you know you're on on the same level as as all the other guys, and not think that you've been given a duff head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything, everything comes together, but just it's that kind of camaraderie where you can um, help those within your team and and even the stunt guys who who um, who double for you or have to wear some of your outfits. You can actually give them a bit more advice about it. And I think there was uh, was it was it in this one? I think I think um, a stunt double got into one of the L1 suits at some point or another yeah. and had briefed about the movement and um i think they were fighting with it wanted it to move more and whatever but it's you you can't do that they're designed to move a certain way so you have to go with it um having just that knowledge like anyone who steps into an l1 suit now i i can step in and, and help the team out because i know what it's like to be inside that suit um and that's you know that's just a natural instinct that that just that just happens and, and comes into play but um it's been a very gradual process in in for me kind of realizing and understanding um things that i know about or things that i can contribute or help out with and if i don't i i certainly know more than a few guys that do you know um to help somebody out and um that that growth that growth has 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 uh, it's been a beautiful one, and like I said, you know, I feel like I'm at college, and I will treat it. I will always treat these things like I'm being at college because I'm getting such an education. You know, um, Neil Scanlon um, has such uh, 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 has such a capacity to understand how these things move and who should do what and how this needs to move or how he needs to modify something. Um, let alone, you know, what you need to do with dinosaurs and, and things like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm in awe of the company that I keep um, 24-7 when I'm there. So you've done a lot of creatures. Is there any type of creature or any type of character that you'd like a crack at that you haven't had a go at yet? Have, uh, you know, be it, uh, thinking of creature types like a mammal or a four-legged <laughs> creature. Do you know what I'm saying? Just something different because you've 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 done sort of an insectoid character. Uh, obviously, uh, Quay. I've got to remember that Quay is is a different. He's a pike, so he's a bit different. Or would you like to be seen yourself on screen? Is that an ambition? Um, the actor, the actor in me, um, doesn't doesn't really mind um, whether I'm seen or not as long as I've got something to bring to life and to act out of. Uh, Quay is probably the more concise of all of them because he has not, 
he ha- he has rhyme and reason to be involved in a specific scene and and to actually have a purpose or, or a um a motivation of his own you know um within all of within that spectrum um i mean i would i you know i i i feel that there's still more in me to to, to do and play an actual an actual pike you know i don't know i'd like to be called back to play play more pikes you know i i love their movement um i love just their their temperament for movement and you know everything's everything's got a, a thought behind it and you're not quite sure if that thought is a good one for you. <laughs> you know? yeah. Um, I, I like that. Um, but then again, you know, the Star Wars universe is so is so so huge. Any other I, I, any other character I get to play that has that kind of interaction, I would like. You know, because even if that that performance is for five minutes or, or two minutes on the screen, it, it takes a lot to to, to actually deliver that you know i mean quay's costume weighed weighed more than me and my principal dresser combined you know and and that was cheeky cheeky serrano and she's a tiny little spanish girl she's lovely yeah. but but she, she she owned that costume like a boss you know she knew how to lift it knew how to get it over my head knew how, and and it, and I'm telling you, it weighed a ton. When I'm standing there holding the keys, uh, my shoulders aren't down. My shoulders are up, having to uh, are holding that yeah that whole costume. Um, the next day was was painful, but I felt like I'd earned that pain. <laughs> you know, um, I think yeah, I I don't know. There are, there are so many creatures still to be created or still to be discovered. As well as those already known in that universe, there were droids. I, I love, I loved playing it L1 for that split second in in um, in Rogue One. Yeah. Uh, and I think mainly because in his conception, uh, he had he had a different purpose. He had a different purpose. So you, we kind of understood where he was going and how he was going to fit into this movie. And then when that changed and um, they redeveloped him. And that became K2SO. Um, it was almost like he was like a, a downgraded model. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. He was ready for scrap. You just created this big long thing and, and whatever. And then you just got this, this, this little droid as like, um, so I was, you know, when I walked on set, he already had a history. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, I would, I don't know. I'd love to play, I love, love playing more characters that, that have, that kind of interaction. I think um, I understand that medium and that level of performance that they're looking for. And like I said, I I, I, I caught this one quite early as being a mixture of a live action and a Rebels cartoon. Sure. And um, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing offensive in either one of those terms to me. Oh, so um, it just sat just so right. And the way that I performed and delivered it or whatever, it was, it fit in, it fit in really, really well. And then there was, and I loved the, the bit that they kept in, which was when he closes the door, you know, and he puts that key in the door and I know how the doors move. So, so it's kind of like, I'm not just going to do that and wait for you to close the doors and then look at Kira. I close the doors. Then I looked at Beckett and then it closed. Yeah. And I was like, you're damn right. <laughs> You're damn right. You had to keep that. So um, I love those little things, and and I get it. I get it so much. It's kind of like um, it's it's it feels quite natural. It feels quite natural. It's always the little moments, isn't it? The little moments that stick out. The the little um, nuanced moments that just yeah. make it's the icing on the cake, isn't it? It's like it's like it's also like when I was putting on the head because um, I have to because. It's kind of like um, everything on the head is is kind of built. Um, it's just the back that comes off, so it has to come over my face. Yeah. And every time it did that, because of the shape of the eyes, it felt like um, you know in Revenge of the Sith when when Vader's mask is going down onto onto Anakin and yeah. you see it inside. I was seeing that every time they put the head on. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, I know I ain't Vader, but I'm seeing that same visual. You know, um, 
which was amazing. Um, but yeah, all these little things that, that, that kind of kept my, kept me ticking over, um, or kept my excitement ticking over was just naturally there. Even the way Bradford was, 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 um, framing the shots and, and the way everything just looked. And then, you know, lo and behold, halfway through, I run into Ron Howard. It's, um, look, I've got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, um, I used to rush home from school to watch Happy Days and oh, Batman. Oh, yeah. So it was Batman, um, that this 1960s version. Yeah. Uh, so you got a half an hour of that and then it was followed by Happy Days. Um, so yeah, where am I now? Where am I now to the point where I'm stood here? With Ron Howard, Richie Cunningham, and he's so much more than what he was when, when he was in Happy Days. And I guess I'm so much more than I was when I was a kid watching it. But these, these circles that, that are just in, encompassing me and my awareness, you know, um, is absolutely incredible. Like I even got to speak to Woody Howison and, and to- told him how, how amazed and how proud I am not even know, knowing him that well but but seeing that journey from from cheers yeah. and tv to, to feature films because you know I watched cheers I remember watching soap I remember watching Benson remember watching Benson oh, I remember Benson because <laughs> I'm a Trek fan and Rene Aubergine I was in Benson so I always watched Benson yeah <laughs> yeah you know and, and and soap and thing and taxi oh my god I'm, I'm carrying on so but but anyway but you know and I'm showing our age now <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed yes indeed <laughs> maybe we should stop right there so, so. <laughs> um but yeah you know and 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 loving what he brought to cheers because you know there's only so much comedy you could embrace at that age when you were a kid yeah. that that was you know interesting enough for for a youngster to grab hold of as well as being who it's for which were the adults and when woody came on board it was hilarious and it, everybody got it you know and it was so sincere and so sweet how funny he was at the character and um and then he just turned around and was complimenting me on on doing that language and doing that voice and and what i've been doing and you know um yeah, it was it was a love, lovely moment meeting those guys and and Alden was just was just a consummate artist, you know. Mm. You know, he was relaxed and and he was reading his book and I know he does a lot of reading. Everyone says he does a lot of reading, but yeah, he does a lot of reading. <laughs> and, um, really. You know, and then and then you know, it's time for action and it, and it's Han. I never saw a doubt in his mind. I never saw a doubt on the screen. I never doubted him for a moment. Totally. The one thing we said was when we were talking about the film to other people and, and, and our review, we said, yeah, he's not a young Harrison Ford. Nobody can be a young Harrison Ford, but there's no, never a second when you don't think that's Han Solo. And yeah. I, I can't think of a higher compliment, really. Yeah. I mean, you've got to look at these movies. Oh, wow. I had an epiphany yesterday. <laughs> so, 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 so uh, you've got to look at these movies. These movies are live action cartoons. Yes. Right. Why? Because that's what the serials were back in the day that inspired George Lucas. Right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. They were, uh, you know, you had, you had a Flash Gordon comics, but then you had this, this really terrible black and white movie or TV show with terrible things happening and all, <laughs> looking terrible, or whatever. You loved it. You know, um, can you hear the ice cream man? Uh, you know, my, the ice cream man came round my call the second about twenty minutes ago. I think he's driven to your house. He must have known. He must have known. Excuse, excuse me for one minute. <laughs> you can do the Eddie Murphy sketch now, running after the ice cream man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the lyrics. But anyway, right? So, hang on, wait for my theme tune to finish. Yeah, I think it's I finished. Just a, I just want a 99 now with a <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, yeah, right. So, so, so then, so the, the based on the serials, which was George's original plan. Yeah, yeah. Um, because he didn't know how many movies he was going to make, the first one was rounded off. But the second one was left open ended because yeah. he wants the cliffhangers, right? And, and then he got to the third one, so he's like, oh, maybe I've wrapped it up now, so he wraps it up. Then he thinks, oh, you know what? I'm going back. I want to do the prequels. And then guess what? 
every one of those prequels is a cliffhanger. Totally. And it has cliffhangers in the dialogue all the way through it. Yeah. So you're not sure what it's referring to, when it's referring to something that's coming, or this has been something that was referred to earlier was mentioned, yeah. right? So now he's got all the cliffhangers, he's got the routine going. And then um, with everything, with the Venture the Sith, that cliffhanger starts answering cliffhangers you didn't even know were in A New Hope. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And so now we understand we're actually watching a sci-fi a space opera, not like a, like a TV opera. That's what we're watching. It's a yeah. space opera, so it's continual. And so um, there's also this other thing where I know that these movies aren't being made for me. These movies aren't being made for any adult right now. They're being made for your children and then their children, because when they grow up, what are they going to watch? They're going to watch a whole coherent linear story epic story of these movies that, that we have questions about now want to know about this want to know about that but those those questions are all going to be answered but it's going to be answered throughout every format yeah, yeah. so even right now even right now that nobody really wants to sell or celebrate that this epic franchise is on animation Comics, books, films, and then you've got then you've got animated shorts. Yeah, it's covering all of this, all of those um, media spectrums. Yeah, and it's all canon. Yes. Yeah, and no other franchise can say that they're doing that. Marvel can a little bit, but not to the size and the extent that Mar- that that uh, Lucasfilm are doing it. No. You know. Um, and that, that was my whole thought process yesterday. It's kind of like under, just connecting those dots a little bit because if Han Solo is, sorry, if Solo is the way forward, um, for, for Disney and, and family entertainment, yeah. they couldn't have bit, picked a better structure for it, mixing the animation with the live action. Agreed. You know, just in that, in, just in its feel and its energy. Yeah. You know, um, I think it's, I think, you know, I'm I'm already sold, man. And um, I know there are people struggling with trying to get it or trying to understand it. And it's just like, no, you'll you'll get it. Or if you don't, don't worry, your kids will get it. <laughs> you know, I totally it's, agree with that. It does. It, feel, it feels like Raiders. When we came out of seeing it on Leicester Square at the press screening, the first thing we said was three word review. I couldn't do a three word review. I did a four word <laughs> review. I said reminds me of Raiders. But obviously, Lawrence Kasdan wrote it, but it's got that pace. It's got that energy. You know, and uh, I, yeah. think, I think you and uh, you and the crew should be very proud of it because I thought it was fantastic. Oh, um, I I'm, I have love it. I love that movie. Um, I've just put a shout out to uh, to Matt and Martin. Say, so, yeah, shall we go and see it? <laughs> if, yeah. if we can, if, if one of the stories see it next week. So if you're available, let us know. <laughs> I'm up for it. I, I want to see. It. I've seen it three times at this point. My wife's seen it twice. Uh, yeah. Who you will meet when we all go to the O2 to see the Muppets. So you'll meet you yeah. meet then. So, but um, yeah, I definitely want to see it again. So yes, let let me know. Drop me a line, and we'll we'll organise it. Cause I'm well up for seeing it again. Definitely, definitely. So we just, I think Martin's up for it. I'm just waiting for for Matt to come back with a few dates or something like that. But cool. yeah, next week, fingers fingers crossed. I think it'll be, I think it'll be everyone's fourth fourth I think time. It will be by then. Yeah, I think it will. Yeah, got to be, be done. But no, everyone loves what we've what what Lucasfilm have created. Um, loves um, that. All the hard work that was put in was um, wasn't for nothing. It wasn't kind of like um, restructured and then and then rushed and put together. And I never, I didn't think for one second that it would be. Yeah. You know, I, I know Lucasfilm don't believe in failure um, and don't believe in reboots. So it has to be right from the get go. And um, whatever they they leave out, you assume either it's a mistake or that mistake will turn into a, a, a well-conceived plan. <laughs> you know, there's always a plan. Yeah. For later on, you know, um, <laughs> and it's just this one was 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 yeah, it was the hardest one for me to work on in terms of geeking out. And and Quay, I love Quay, but you know what? I still have to come back to that little dude, Kratinus. Uh, <laughs> um, I think he he did a lot to um convince neil um 
I was worthwhile keeping on. You know, um, he did a lot to impress um, JJ. He worked very, very hard with it, with his twin brother Prashi, entertaining in between takes. Um, and everything about that was was just so. Oh, how do I put it? It was so um, neatly packaged in in a sense that everything I had loved about. Star Wars, everything that I had loved about Jim Henson and the Muppets yeah. um, and everything I'd loved or felt that I would love about the working process, should I ever be on something as, as big as that, yeah. um, all came into play. You know, um, there was never a complaint. Um, there were loads of giggles and loads of and all, all those types of things that you can't help wearing that face. But um, and there was never a moment where. Um, I was tired. Um, you know, just tell me when to go and I will go, yeah. you know, and, and that was being also aware of the fact that it's not just Star Wars. This is for JJ. Yeah. And I love JJ's work. I love him as an individual, you know, um, his vision, the way he sees things. And it's no, he, you know, it's no different for me to, to Spielberg or George Lucas with the amount of vision that that man has, you know, so, it was with all of those things combined, um, yeah, helped, helped, um, Kratinus to, you know, audition, I guess, for, for Neil CFX team, you know, and I, and I, and I know you guys ask me every now and again, oh, are you working on this one? Are you working on this one? Um, I can never take it for granted that I'm ever going to be. Yeah. I, I, I love, I love the guys to bits and, I know that if they they have something for me, then I'll I'll be there. You know they you know they just have to call me and I'll say yes. <laughs> you know you know that's that's how easy they have it in regards to is D available. I think so, but let's just let's just hear him <laughs> say the words. Yeah. You know? So it's it, yeah, all of that has has been a brilliant platform from which I'm I've been able to kind of conceive and, and grow all the other characters out of and um quay is is the pinnacle of of that journey yeah. you know i didn't get to do more than I, I i thought i was going to for rogue um but i was i had i had that had that special moment with the kids on set anyway you know that i'll always take with me and um and and also me giving that that moment on a Star Wars set to those children and and various bit members of crew and things like that. So it was even if I've I've only been on set for for two seconds or, or in a movie for two minutes, I feel like it's given me so much to give back to everybody else on set, you know, um, and give them those memories. Um, and then slow and low, <laughs> you know, slow and low. He, he's another one who just popped up and then. It was one bonus after the other from Joseph Gordon Levitt doing the voice to Beastie Boys name. It was yeah, just like, yeah. wow, this is, this is, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is my ballpark. And then, um, and then Quay, it's just, yeah. You're, you're a happy bunny. I can tell you're a happy bunny. <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good to hear the energy. It really is because, uh, you know, as you know, sometimes Star Wars fandom can be a little bit up and down and, and the world can be a little bit uh, not as bright and shiny as it should be. So it's nice to hear somebody who's just buzzing about it all. So. Listen, man, listen, that's Star Wars. That's Star Wars. The dark side and the light side, those aren't myths. Yeah? Yeah. In stories, they're myths based on real polarities. Yeah? And the polarities in, in people's energy is real. So when you're talking about, when you're saying, well, anger leads to hate and hate leads to suffering, it's just like, that's what they're going through. Yeah. But then also at the same time, I welcome the purge. Yeah. There have been a lot of people nurturing, um, negative comments about Star Wars, um, and all trying to be very intellectually, um, snide with their humor or their comments about it just to fob it off, but haven't realized that they're applying adult logic to a children's movie. True. If they were applying that logic to an adult's movie, then I would, they would have my ear, but they're applying this logic to a children's movie the same way you would expect them to apply it to an animation 
because everyone's fine with the Rebels cartoon. I haven't heard that many complaints about the Rebels cartoon, but that's because, oh, it's a cartoon, it's for kids. But as soon as it turns to live action, oh, that's ours. We're, we're adults. It's an adult. No, it ain't. If it's, if it's a, if I'm saying that it's a mix between the Rebels cartoon and live action, that ain't, that ain't above a 12. True. You know? Yeah. And so, and then they start, and it gathers pace because people start thinking intellectually and say, yeah, but that, the writing was difficult. Yeah, the writing should have been more adult there. No, no, that, that was a bit silly. And, and they don't realize that they've, they've joined a, a kind of warped version, dark side of, 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 um, a review of, of what is golden, what is light, what is Jedi, you know, and, um, and then the Siths reveal themselves as, as dark individuals with their personal attacks and things like that. And, um, the people who have aided that are all the people that aid all the negative talk, all the, all the negativity about Star Wars. What do you think negativity is going to breed? Yeah. But, but I welcome it because it's a purge. It will separate the Star Wars fans from those who aren't Star Wars fans, but call themselves Star Wars fans. You know, you judge a Star Wars band, fan by their actions, man. <laughs> you know? I couldn't That's, agree more. You judge a Star Wars fan by the amount of love they have, you know, and we outnumber them. As Ryan Johnson has said on Twitter, he's damn right we outnumber them. So um, there is a lot of love and there is a lot of joy left still in Star Wars, um, and there always will be, and it will always supersede the dark side, because that's what the rebellions uh, and Jedi's are doing right now when they block them on their on their media pages and things like that. So yeah, yeah, take away their voice. <laughs> take couldn't, away. Couldn't, couldn't say it better than that, and I'm going to end on that spot because that is like the perfect finish. I couldn't say it better. Thanks, Dave. We really really appreciate <laughs> you giving your time. Uh, and and I don't know if you remember when we spoke the first time. We spoke for about an hour and a half. And do you remember it didn't record and we had to record it again? Oh, yeah. oh so no, don't tell me no, no, no. Fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed, man. It's got to have recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.